StatMuse put out this tweet after the Utah Jazz took down the Toronto Raptors at home 131 to 128. Uh, the Utah Jazz have been an excellent story in the league. They're now 8-3 and three after sweeping the LA teams this weekend. But how in the world? No one expected them to be 8-3, and three, Richard. Amen. How in the world, Ramona, are they doing? But just a few months earlier, the state of the team was completely different. The Jazz were in complete dismay following the 2021-2022 season. Another year of falling short of expectations in the playoffs with what was possibly the most talented team since the Stockton and Malone era. Rumors constantly swirling about the relationship between Gobert and Mitchell. The front office had already sold away their future picks and their star wanted out. What started out being a young, fun, and exciting team to watch devolved into dysfunction and complacency. So how have the Jazz turned it around so quickly? How did they replace their cornerstone pieces in one season with similar, if not better, production in some ways? And all of that at a fraction of the price. In fact, at the time of recording this video, the Jazz still have the fourth best offensive rating in the NBA. Their defense is another story, currently 26. All of this isn't to say they don't miss Mitchell and Gobert, but it does seem like they're on track to build something special. And I think that's thanks to Danny Ainge. After years of running it back and running it back, it was finally over. And in true Ainge fashion, the Jazz did not come away empty handed. Major breaking news out of the NBA where the Utah Jazz have traded Donovan Mitchell breaking to the Breaking news Cleveland alert. Cavaliers. Utah Jazz, Jazz are sending Rudy Gobert to the Minnesota Timberwolves. Utah picks, receives, are you ready? Game. Malik Beasley, our friend Patrick Beverly, Jared Vanderbilt, Walker Kessler, who was Minnesota's first round pick just this year, and multiple future first round picks. 15 first round picks over the next seven years to be exact. He also managed to land one hugely underrated piece prior to the 2022-2023 season. Now, going into this season, Jazz fans had accepted their fate and hashtag tank no was born. After all, this was looking to be one of the deepest and most promising draft classes in a long time, with the ultimate prize being 7-3 freak of nature, Victor Winbenyama. So the Jazz tipped off the season with the expectation to finish at or close to the bottom of the Western Conference. But that's not what happened. The Jazz tipped it off guns a blazin', which honestly made sense. It was a team full of misfit toys and spare parts, throwaways if you will. They wanted to come out and prove their worth, secure a long-term contract with the Jazz or somewhere else. And it definitely showed. Couple all that angst with the beautiful flashiness of Jordan Clarkson and the veteran leadership of Mike Conley, and this team was must-see TV out of nowhere, for a month or so at least. As many predicted, the Jazz came back down to earth as teams figured them out. But even with the mediocre record, one thing was clear. Well, two things. Lowry Markinen and Walker Kessler were the new cornerstones the Jazz were going to build around. Lowry is coming off a good year in Cleveland and a massive performance in Europe and has centered himself as the number one option on offense. And rookie Walker Kessler has impressed and the Jazz couldn't keep him out of the starting lineup for long. With his play, it's hard not to compare the two centers involved in the trade. Both players have similar physical attributes with Gobert obviously having the advantage in the length department. Both rim protectors without much offensive production outside of the painted area. Gobert has demonstrated over and over just how disruptive he can be for opposing teams trying to score in the paint. He's also an underrated perimeter defender, showing many times the ability to recover after initially getting blown by. Now we don't have much tape on Kessler as he just recently cracked the starting lineup, which the coaching staff was forced to do based on his solid play in the minutes that he got. He's already demonstrated elite shot blocking and rim protection and the level of Gobert, but he's also showed off his soft hands which Gobert never did. It's way too early to fully compare these two players, but Kessler is showing he could be an all-star level center in the league for many years to come. And I can't help but think what's going through Minnesota's mind right now. It's too early to tell whether Gobert was a bust of a trade for the Timberwolves, but given the fact that Rudy Gobert is making close to 40 million this year versus Kessler's 2.6, it's hard to justify what they paid given the return on investment so far. Now, looking at the other half of the trade with Mitchell and Markinen, I don't want to compare the two players given the fact that they're so different. But let me know in the comments, who would you rather build your franchise around right now? Mitchell is having an all-NBA borderline MVP season, and Lowry made his first all-star team and has the argument to be made for most improved player. And as the trade deadline approached, 
The Jazz had a decision to make, write out the current roster into most likely mediocrity and hope that you can keep developing and hit a sleeper pick in the draft or keep selling and try to hit on another young star to potentially make something really special. And they chose to sell. A three-team trade sent Vanderbilt and Beasley to Los Angeles with D'Angelo Russell and Mike Conley to the Timberwolves, getting back a top four protected first round pick in 2027. And fair to say, Jazz fans had mixed reviews online. And frustration could be warranted, but I think expectations were so high after a market-breaking trade for Gobert and Mitchell last summer. It was going to be hard, if not impossible, to top that. And maybe the market just wasn't there for an aging, injury-prone Mike Conley. Regardless, the Jazz are positioned nicely to sink like a rock to the end of the season. But taking for a top pick to land a franchise player is easier said than done. Many teams have tried this strategy only to plummet into irrelevance for decades at a time. Teams with perennial lottery picks fail to put together winning records every year. There's a fine line to walk between losing enough games to get a star player and completely destroying the team's culture in the process. It seems the safest route to go is to mix young talent that has high ceiling with veteran leadership that are willing to take them under their wing. Although it does help your chances when you have 15 shots over the next 7 years. And if we're being honest, what other choice do the Jazz have? Everyone in Utah is well aware of the harsh reality that superstar free agents aren't going to sign there no matter how much cap space they have. The biggest name in recent memory was Boyan Bogdanovich, who I love, don't get me wrong. They were able to secure Mike Conley in a trade and it was a huge deal for them to sign him to another deal. And while Mike Conley is very much showing his age, it's no doubt that he played a huge role in mentoring young players and holding down a winning culture and habits amid so much uncertainty. And among that uncertainty was finding a new head coach to top everything off. One of the most underrated parts of the Jazz offseason moves was firing Quinn Snyder and hiring first-time head coach Will Hardy. It was obvious to everyone, including Quinn, that it was time to move on. Snyder was a great coach for the Jazz, but towards the end, it was very much apparent that his stubborn lineups, unwillingness to play hot hands, and favoring players that were not producing simply because they fit his system was never going to take the Jazz all the way to a championship. And in many ways, Will Hardy is the complete opposite of Quinn Snyder. As the youngest coach in the league, he is known for his willingness to play young players who have shown consistent flashes, those being Kessler, Agbaji, and Talon Horton Tucker. It also seems accountability has returned in the hire of Will Hardy. We've seen players get more or less minutes based on their play on the court. And it's hard to predict where the Jazz will go from here, but one thing is for sure. Up to this point in time, the Jazz are hitting all the right notes. I'll see myself out.